Crafters, everyone. Actually, welcome to my backyard. You might notice some familiar faces here with us today. My name is Casey, and we're actually having a little bit of a watch party of our own today. Yeah, thanks for having us over. I'm, I'm super excited about today. I know Pastor Chuck's got a great message. Really, I'm just excited to be with people again, get out of the house. If I'm being honest, I came for the donuts. That's, that's why I'm here today, yeah. Yes, and if you are also in a watch party, whether you're with your family, your friends, or your Q group, stay tuned to the end of this service because we are going to be posting some questions for all of you guys to answer. Yeah, we have four questions that are designed to help spark some conversation and help you guys apply the message that you're gonna hear today. That's right, but if you guys are joining us for the very first time today, we're so happy to have you. Maybe you've been here with us for a while and you've just never used the chat feature. Make sure to leave us a comment at some point today. Let us know what you thought of the message or even what you had for breakfast or if you have a prayer request, we would love to connect with you at some point today. So go ahead and use that chat feature. And we also wanna uh, suggest if you haven't subscribed to our channel, our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss another one of Crossroads messages again. Yeah, and depending on on where you are watching or when, this Sunday, September 13th, we are starting a brand new series called The Book of the King. Now, this series is based off of the book of Isaiah, and Pastor Chuck created a really awesome study guide or journal, depending on what you want to call it, to really help us dig deeper into this book. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I hear all the time being a pastor is that when people want to get into the Bible, they don't really know where to start, or when they do start, they might lose interest along the way because they don't understand what they're reading. That's why something like this, a study guide, a journal, whatever you want to call it, is going to make a huge difference because Pastor Chuck is going to be able to walk you through this book of Isaiah, really explain what it means, and we're going to get the most out of it. So I'm really excited for something like this. Well, sorry, and I agree with you, man. I love that this book is only $10. And so make sure if you guys head over to crossroadschurch.family and pick one up. Yes, and we are right here live every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. and Sundays at 9 a.m. Now, if those times don't work out for you, no problem. We are also on On Demand. That's right. And we want to thank you guys for your generosity in this season and just making an impact with us all over the world. If you want to be part of that, you can text GIVING to 69922 and jump in with us anytime. But right now, let's take a look at how your generosity is impacting the world around us. Hey Crossroads, this is Andy from the Disabilities Ministry and I am here with Francisco Casas. Francisco Casas, yes, and we are about to do a recording for what we call home visits for our ministry that we post on our YouTube channel. Hey everyone, it's Tuesday here at the pantry and we are so excited. You can see our crew here, but we are packing 116 boxes today to feed 116 families in the Corona area. Hey everybody, we're out here at Adopt-A-Block getting ready. We got some water balloons out here today. We're gonna have some fun games. We got some snacks. We got the team members here. We got some people showing up. We're gonna do some coaching and tutoring over there. It's gonna be a great day. Hey Crossroads, I'm here at my dining room table getting ready to go live for our set free ministry tonight. Tonight we have a special guest speaker coming to share with us about what it really truly means to become free from our hurts, habits, and hangups. Hey everyone, as you can see, I'm standing inside of the Plex right now. We're getting ready for our Spanish services at 11 a.m. Right behind me is our worship team. Hey guys. What's up Crossroads? It's Tyler DeYoung. I am the production director here at Crossroads. We are loading in for our HSM watch party tonight and we have Pastor Chuck's podcast happening in a few hours. Um, we'll be up there later doing Chuck's podcast and right now we're going to head outside and get to see what the crew is doing uh, getting ready for that watch party. Hi I'm Kim getting ready to film Littles Live. We love being able to bring God's word to preschoolers in fun and creative ways. I'm here in my living room. I have my ring light, my computer, some props including our guinea pig Einstein. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Lauren. We are getting ready for this week's filming. That is Jacqueline right there. She's bringing the message this week to our kids' ministry. And you're Ryan filming. Feels good. What's up, guys? Steve here. We are gearing up. Me and the interns are getting ready to plan stuff for junior high ministry because we are passionate about reaching your students 
for Jesus. So we do whatever it takes around here to do that. What's up, Crossroads? I am out here in front of the church getting ready for an HSM event. Um, you know, I'm supposed to tell you what I'm excited about, but I had some friends come and help me show you what I'm excited about. What up, HSM? Hey guys, Laura here. I just wanted to go ahead and show you what church looks like in 2020 for our college and young adult group. Go ahead and say hi, guys. We have fully transformed um, my living room because the church must go on. Crossroads, thank you for making all of these ministries possible through your generosity. When you give here, you are investing in life-changing work, even in the middle of quarantine. As the pastor of our Adopt-A-Block ministry, I see firsthand every week how your generosity is making a difference in people's lives here in our community. I know that every single family that we serve in our neighborhoods would say thank you for investing in them. If you want to join us in doing this kind of good in the world, you can text the word giving to 69922 right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you are doing through us. We pray for all the families uh, that we serve through Adopt-A-Block. And I pray uh, for every person who gives here today that you would bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey everyone, welcome. I am so excited we're together right now and I'm thrilled you tuned in. If you're part of the Crossroads family, welcome, welcome. I love we get to connect. If you are brand new, uh, you know what? You matter to God and you matter to us and I want you to know that. So uh, anyway, uh, we want to be a part of you connecting with God and connecting with others. Now, there's a, a way to do that called the Redeemed Conference. Now, this is for women. And by the way, Cody Lee put it in the chat. I loved it. Cody Lee put in the chat, can't wait for the girl time and the empowerment that comes from the ladies who are going to be bringing it. So this is not just about a virtual conference. It's about connecting with God and connecting with each other. And you are going to love it. Uh, my wife, Pam, is going to be hosting and she can't wait to be with you. Then what's going to happen is we have incredible speakers, one of whom is Lori Wilhite. And then after the conference is over, we're going to have Q groups or life groups uh, based on Lori's book, Rise Up. So you want to be a part of this, make sure you go to crossroadschurch.com or crossroadschurch.family and you click on the Redeem Conference, get signed up, have a watch party at your house, ha uh, get friends to be a part of this. Women connect, ladies connect, you matter and you need, you need your girl time. <laughs> my wife, my wife Pam needs some girl time. So anyway, uh, it's going to be really, really good. Tonight, we're going to start a brand new series, but it's a kind of a different one. It'll be this week, next week, and then we're going to do it at different times throughout the year. Uh, it's called Best of the Best. And what it is, is some of my friends are some of the best pastors and best preachers I know. These guys bring the word. They're filled with the spirit. They're an anointed with God. They're doing great things. So what I did is I reached out to them and I said, hey, can you preach a message for our Crossroads family? that is the best message you've ever preached. I, I let them choose what it was, but they're preaching the best message they ever preached. And so this week we have Gene, uh, uh, Judd Wilhite. Next week we have Gene Apple. Herbert Cooper's coming pretty soon. It is just going to be awesome. But get ready for tonight. Tonight, you're about to be blessed by Judd Wilhite. Uh, Judd, whose wife Lori is one of our speakers at the Redeem Conference. Uh, Judd and Lori are good friends of Pam and I. We love them. Uh, Judd at one time was a pastor here at Crossroads. And then God put his hand on him and called him to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he now is the, the senior leader of, uh, of Central Christian Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. They're running over 18,000 people. Hurting people are finding healing. Broken people are finding redemption. Uh, people are finding freedom as Judd has let out in a way where people know they're accepted, loved, and pursued by God. Uh, you're about to hear an incredible message that will help you in a time of testing and a time of trials. So I want to tell you, you're about to be blessed by my friend, Judd Wilhite. Let's pray and we're going to get ready to hear from him. Father, I love Judd. I love the anointing you put on his life. I love the way I can learn from him. And I, I love how you've used him to help so many others. How, I pray tonight. I pray tonight, oh Lord, you're going to use him to help us. And so no matter when and where someone's watching this, may they find love, 
May they find hope. May they find strength and the wisdom to get through it and go on. I pray right now you're going to use this time in a powerful way for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what's up, Crossroads Church? My name's Judd Wilhide, and what a joy to be with you today. Some of you may not know this, but years ago, um, I had the privilege of serving at Crossroads for a couple years, great formative ministry years in my life, and so have a lot of great memories of the church and the people and the community, and uh Gosh, then we moved across the desert to the Las Vegas area, and I've now been out here 17 years, which means I'm officially old. But uh, anyway, it's, um, it's uh, with great joy that I come to you today, and I love your pastor, Chuck, and his amazing wife, Pam. You know, Chuck's not only um, an incredible teacher, uh, he brings things out of the Bible that you've never seen before and applies them to your life in powerful ways. But one of the things I've always just admired about Pastor Chuck is um, his real heart for people who are far from God and the way he helps people um, lean in and experience God and his grace in their lives. And I know many of you and uh, tens of thousands of people in the Southern California area and around the world have come to faith in Christ through Pastor Chuck's ministry. So I'm grateful for uh, his heart and for uh, the way God uses him when it comes to reaching people far from God. And uh, of course, everybody loves Pam. My uh, wife absolutely adores uh, Pam, and um, just uh, every time you're around her, she brings joy and light into a room. And so uh, Lori and I have said for years that Chuck and Pam are kind of marriage goals for us. And so uh, we admire them so much, look up to them, and thankful to them for this opportunity to be able to share with you for a moment today. I wonder if you've ever had a car that was always breaking down. And some of you might say that's the car you're driving right now. Like it's just always breaking down, always giving you trouble, kind of driving you crazy. Well, for me, um, I had a car like that. It was the worst car I've ever had. And it was a Mitsubishi Montero, a 1991. In fact, we'll bring it up on the screen here. Check this out. This is what it looked like. I got the car because it was sporty and it would look cool and I could afford it. You know why I could afford it? Because it had a rebuilt title. So, so, um, it had been totaled and kind of put back together, but I thought, no problem, you know, it'll be great. I'm sure everything will be fine. And so I bought this car and this car was trouble almost from day one. It was constantly breaking down. It was constantly giving me grief. Um, I mean, you know, Carrie Underwood wrote a song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Remember that song? Well, with my Montero, it was every time I got in, it was a different song. It was like, Jesus, please let it start. Just let it start. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be driving down the road, there'd be so much smoke behind me, you'd think I was in an old Cheech and Chong movie. I mean, it was crazy town. And uh, finally, I got to my breaking point. I just couldn't take it anymore. It had broke one too many times, and it was acting up again. A lot of things can lead us to a breaking point in our lives. You may be there in a lot of areas in your life right now. Maybe some of you, you're at a breaking point with your patience, <laughs> You know, the virus hit and, and you navigated homeschooling and all of that in the spring and you thought maybe when we moved into the fall, things would be different and now you're gearing up all over again to be teacher and mom or dad and an employee and all the different things just feels overwhelming and your patience is running thin. You're at a breaking point. Maybe you feel like you're at a breaking point when it comes to um, money in your life and resources. Things have just continued to be challenging and difficult and kind of now you're at a place where you feel like it's just gotten to a breaking point. Maybe you're at a breaking point in your marriage. You know, quarantine didn't go so well for you and now you're on the other side of that and it's just like, oh my goodness. You know, the, the pressure has been tangible. You feel like you're at a breaking point. I think we all know what it is to get to breaking points in our lives. But here's how I want to encourage you today. God can use your breaking point as a turning point for growth and for good. God can use your breaking point as a turning point for growth and for good. And in my case with my Montero, that breaking point when I'd finally had enough led me to a car dealership where I swapped that car out and never again will I buy a rebuilt car. That's just me uh, because uh, reliability is hugely important to me. Your breaking point can be a turning point that God uses. 
And we need to be reminded of that, especially right now, because we're in the wilderness Crossroads family. We're, we're in the wild right now. Things feel out of control and uncertain, and they have for months. And as we look to the future, we aren't sure exactly what's coming. That's a perfect definition of what life is like in the wild and in the wilderness. So I want to go with you today to the Israelites' journey through the wilderness, because many of the things they experienced in the wilderness are the similar things that we'll experience in the wilderness season in our lives. So we when you look back at the book of Exodus, you see that the Israelites, they were uh, freed from slavery after hundreds of years of being captive, and they began this journey from Egypt all the way to what would be Israel, the promised land, and to get there, they had to go across this vast wilderness area, and um, they faced a lot of challenges that we would face today. In fact, let's bring them up here on this screen, and I'll just talk through some of the challenges the Israelites face. First, they face a lack of direction. And when we're tested in our lives, when we go through the wilderness or the wild in our lives, we often face a lack of direction. We aren't sure uh, what's coming next. In fact, the Israelites, as soon as they crossed over into the wilderness, God actually has them double back. Like they, they do a complete 180 and go back the way they came, and he's trying to confuse use Pharaoh, but the people don't understand, and they're all kind of uh, 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 messed up, tweaked out by this. And so that lack of direction was real. Exodus chapter 13 says that God led the Israelites through the wilderness the roundabout way, not just from the place, place A to place B. God led them the roundabout way. That's what he often does. You would think that God would just allow us to go from point A to point B and just get to the destination, but God often takes us the long way, the long journey to get us there. He's growing something in us that's more important than just where we're going. And so Lack of direction is something the Israelites faced and we face even now. Scarcity is something they faced. Uh, their resources, their time, their energy felt like they were running out. And many of us are facing scarcity in our lives. Moments of crisis, which is what I'm going to anchor in with you today. They faced these breaking points in their life that became turning points. They faced oversized opposition in their lives through the wilderness. They faced impossible obstacles and untested strategies. And what I want to suggest to you today is if you find yourself facing a lack of direction or scarcity or moments of crisis, oversized opposition, impossible obstacles, untested strategies, it doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It doesn't mean God has abandoned you. It doesn't mean God's turned his back on you. In fact, all it fundamentally means is that you are being tested. All it means is that you're in the wild right now. You are in the wilderness right now in your life. And, and so that test is real. We're all walking through it. And I want to encourage you today with how we can face tests, these breakdown moments with faith and with hope. Now, the Israelites, uh, when you get to the book of Exodus chapter 17, they camp out near some water. Um, uh, well, they camp out near what used to be a water source, but there's no water there. And um, we're not exactly sure if it just dried up. We don't know if, there, if there's military situations because they're in a military engagement in the next chapter that kept them from being able to access the water. But they don't have water. When you're in the wilderness and you don't have water, I mean, you only last, you know, about three days, right? So it's pretty dire, pretty fast. And here's what we read in Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 2. It says this, So once more the people complained. Now, I just want to stop right there. Once more, this has already been going on. Once more, the people complain. You know, the first knee-jerk reaction we all face in the wilderness is to complain. And many of us, we've been complaining for months and months and months now. But that is our first sort of knee-jerk initial response when things are hard and they're difficult, we start to complain. And they complained against Moses. Give us water to drink, they demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you, check it out, testing the Lord? Why are you complaining against me? Why are you testing the Lord? So they're complaining. That was one thing. But what he ultimately says is that they were testing the Lord. See, rather than trust God with their trouble, they test God with their grumbling. I think a lot of us can fall to that temptation when we're in the wild, in the wilderness. So how do we face the situations that we're up against? Here's a few thoughts. The first is this, expect the test. Just expect the test 
in your heart and in your life. Um, I don't know how you prepare for tests, but I was always a planner. And uh, if you're a planner, wherever you're at at home, just kind of raise your hand, the planners, let's hear from you. If you're a planner, then when it comes to a test, you know, you like to map it out. I like to have everything laid out. I knew kind of when the test was coming and, and I'd have, you know, how many uh, hours I was gonna spend on review, building up to it. And so when I got to the like test day or the day before, I wasn't really stressed because I had done all the work. Now my wife, was a crammer. And if you're a crammer, let's hear from you at home. Like, like crammers, you know, you, you, you don't worry about deadlines as far as working towards something. You just wait till the night before. And then, you know, she would always have dinner and hang out with friends or whatever. And somewhere between eight and 10 o'clock, she would start cramming for the test. And it might go all night, but uh, she would get ready. Now, she never read a single book in college. And uh, she had almost a 4.0 uh, GPA. And I, I said, how did you do that? And she said, well, I, um, I just took, took great notes on everything the professor said. And I believed that the professors were way more concerned with what they had to say than with what some author had to say in a book. So I memorized all of their notes. And then I went and took the test and uh, aced it almost every time. So there you go. You're welcome. Little, little, little hint for you. But whether you're a planner or a crammer or anywhere in between, we all know what it is to prep for a test. And, and what I wanna share with you right now, we're in a wilderness season right now. We're in the wild right now. You should expect tests. You've already faced tests and you will face more. That's what happens when you're in the wild. The Israelites are facing a test. They just they don't have water. They're frustrated. They're angry. They're complaining. But, and they're testing God with their complaining, but God is actually testing them. And here's the thing about the test that we face in our lives. God does not use tests to simply break you. He uses them to remake you. God doesn't use tests to simply break you. He uses them to remake you. You may be in a test with your family, a test with your work, a test with uh, your own anxiety and, and uh, your sense of the future. You may be, may be in a test with what you can tolerate as it relates to keeping your family members and friends safe right now. Like we're all facing different tests. But here's the thing, God can use that test if we'll allow him. He can use that sort of breakdown and even the breaking point in our life to be a turning point for good and for growth. Check out how James puts it in James chapter one, beginning in verse two. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now this is when we should all stop and just kind of read that again. Like consider it an opportunity for great joy when troubles come our way. Well, James, are you intoxicated? Like, like what, are, what are you saying? It's crazy. He says, for you know that when your faith is tested, there's that word again, when you're tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Look, he's saying that by facing tests, we can gain something we need. They're not just about sort of tearing us down. They're about building us up. Uh, and I don't know what kind of test you might be facing or will face, but I just put together a short list of tests that I've seen and experienced in my own life. And we're just going to bring this up on the screen. Um, usually it kind of breaks down. First test I want to talk about is the test of love, where our sense of usefulness starts to break down. I mean, you, you get to a place where you, you just, you finally realize you can't change, you know, your spouse. You can't change your kids. You can't change your loved ones. All you can do is lovingly impact them. And sometimes your, your sense of usefulness starts to break down. You just can't seem to make a difference with your own efforts. But as you turn toward God and you lean on him, that turning point comes when you learn that you're loved and valued by God, even when you fail and even when you feel powerless. Then there's the, the test of provision. And in the test of provision, what breaks is your sense of resources in your life. You just don't have enough to cover your needs. You have no idea where to go and what to do. Uh, when, but when you lean into God, you learn that he will provide and he will do it every day, day by day. Test of provision. We also face what we might call the test of guidance. And what breaks down here is our sense of clarity. There's just no way to make a good decision or, or to know which way to turn. It seems like everything is falling apart and you don't understand why. But if you lean into God, you discover that he will guide you, that he can get you from where you need to be uh, to where he wants you to be. Another test we face is the test 
of spirit, we might say, where our sense of natural strength starts to break down. You're so used to getting by on your own hustle and your own charm and your own wits and your ability to organize and to plan, but what you're facing is just too big and you're so tired and you're so beaten down that you just can't do it in your own strength anymore. But as you lean into God, you learn that sometimes you don't have to try harder, you just have to try softer. His spirit comes in to fill you up and his strength begins to flow through you and do more than you can hope or imagine. Now, obviously it's not a complete list, but it shows a pattern. See, and the pattern reveals this. A test is a time when God takes away something valuable to give you something priceless which is more of himself. A test is when God takes away something valuable to give you something priceless, more of himself. And we all face tests, just expect it. A test may make you feel weak, but God can use it to make you stronger. A test may make you wanna quit, but God can use it to grow your endurance. A test may make you feel like you aren't enough, but God can use it to show you that he will always be enough. Listen, a test can make you feel like no one is on your side, but God wants to show you that he is for you. Tests can make you feel like nothing will ever be the same, but God can use it to show you that everything can be different. A test can make you feel like your life is over, but God can use it to give you a whole new life. And a test can make you say, hey, this is just too hard. Yet God can use it to say, nothing is too hard for me. Listen, a test can make you feel like everything in your life is falling apart, but God can use it. He can use it to show you that he will hold you together. So expect the test. God can use your breaking point as a turning point for growth and for good. Second thought for you today with the tests and these moments of crisis that we may be facing is don't break faith before the breakthrough. Don't break faith before the breakthrough. I saw this picture on Instagram. I thought it was uh, pretty funny, these uh, two dogs. Uh, one of them's all ripped and looking good and it says before lockdown. And then the other one's um, looking a little bit uh, pudgy here after lockdown. And I, I relate to this a lot. You know, when the when the gyms initially shut down uh, in the quarantine, I, um, I went, I have a little home gym with like a squat rack and some uh, free weights and I, I shut my, I shut my home gym down, you know, out of solidarity people. I mean, I'm just trying to do my part, play along, right? So I've, I've faced a little, uh, uh, a little COVID flabbiness as well. And here's the thing. I've started getting back into it, started lifting again, started working out again. The, you know, the way those muscles grow is you got to tear, they got to break down. You literally go in and when you lift weights, you know, you're, you're actually tearing those muscles at, at small microscopic levels and then it's healing and building back up stronger and bigger and I think in much the same way God will we, you know we are in God's gym right now he, things are breaking down right now but they're not just breaking down to break down they're breaking down so that God can build us back up so that he can strengthen us and the point for all of us in this season is to realize we're in a test don't break faith before the breakthrough hold on to your faith keep walking in faith even when you aren't sure how it's going to work out. Even when you don't know if it will work out, keep trusting God, keep believing him and keep taking it one step at a time. Think about this. God often brings what we need the most from what we want the least. I mean, who wants to face a test? Who wants to be in a tough situation? But that's exactly where the Israelites were. They're facing a test. It's a tough situation. They desperately need water. They're, they're crying out for water. And, um, Moses does something interesting. Instead of complaining, he cries out to God. And there is a big difference between complaining and crying out to God. And I saw this post on social media. This is for somebody today. You're gonna be glad you watched this experience just for this. They said, uh, I've, I stopped venting and I started praying because I don't need sympathy, I need strength. And that's good right there, y'all. That is a good word. Some of us, we've been venting for months and months and months and months, and it's just time to be quiet. Stop venting and start praying because sympathy isn't gonna help you a bit right now, but you need strength to keep moving forward in your 
life. Moses cried out to God for strength, and God heard, and God responded. In fact, check this out. Exodus 17, beginning in verse 5, this is how God responds. The Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people, take your staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock, and water will come gushing out, and then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock as he was told and water gushed out as the elders looked on. Now, one of the things that jumps out at me is God tells Moses to strike the rock. The rock is like the hardest thing in the wilderness. He could have had him strike a tree or a bush or the ground or a sand hill or something. No, no, strike the rock. It's almost as if God's saying, listen, Moses, out of the hardest places, I can bring tremendous good. Out of the hardest place, I can bring new life. And so he strikes the rock and water begins to flow. And that's a word for somebody today because we're in a hard place right now. Some of us are stuck between a rock and a hard place. We never thought we'd be in this situation six months ago, and now we have no idea what the next six months looks like. But God can bring water from the rock. He can bring love and joy and peace from the hardest of places. He can bring new life and hope from things that seem dead and hard. That's what God does. He's in the business of bringing amazing things from hard things. And nothing will get in the way of you and I experiencing what God wants to do in our lives right now in the wilderness faster than complaining. Complaining will cut us off from the flow of so much of what God wants to do right now in our lives. In fact, as you look at the Israelites, you see that again and again and again, they're complaining. And at this point in the Israelite journey, um, they're about a month into the wilderness. So they're not even that far in, and it already says once again, they start to complain. Um, the King James Version uses the word murmur, which I think is a pretty cool word. And it, it kind of sounds like it is, you know, like murmur, 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 murmur. And I, I don't know if you've done some of that uh, over the last days and weeks, but I can only imagine that you have. You know, the governor makes another announcement. More restrictions come out, you know, murmur, murmur, murmur. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, you find out school's not going to happen in the way you thought it was. You're going to have to deal with work. You thought it was going to be one way or, you know, you thought when the reopening happened, it was all going to kind of be over and behind us. And now here we are again. That's kind of what the whole idea behind murmuring is. It's our first knee jerk reaction in the wild, in the wilderness when we're tested. Listen, if you want to complain all day, every day, that is a huge red flag that you are being tested right now in your life. And here's what I think all of us know deep down. Complaining will not improve tomorrow. It will only ruin today. It will only ruin today. In fact, as you look at the Israelites in Exodus and Numbers in their wilderness journey, again and again and again they complain. But you see something that I think should give us pause, and that is that God sees complaining as way more serious than we often do. At least he does with the Israelites in the Old Testament. I mean, you know, we, we often think, hey, we're just complaining, we're just, it's, we're just venting, it's no problem. But God begins to perceive the Israelites complaining as rebellion. And it gets called out as rebellion. And it's as if God takes offense at his people constantly complaining because it's like they're saying, God, uh, you know, you think you have a plan, but my plan is better. And all they're complaining about what's going on in their life starts to look like they're complaining against God and his provision for them in their life. Complaining calls into question the sovereignty of God in my life, the sovereign rule and control of God in my life. The Bible says it's rebellion. And so I think it should give all of us pause. I know for me, as I look back over the last months, I've complained way too much. And I'm trying really hard to turn a corner on complaining and to just hold on to faith and to cry out to God rather than cry out against everything else and allow God to move my life. Let me share with you some things that I've been doing in my life instead of complaining. Um, first thing I've been trying to do in my life is simply this to pray for wisdom daily. 
to pray for wisdom daily, ask for wisdom. Because listen, if you have wisdom, you have the power to make some of the best decisions in some of the worst situations. Wisdom will see a clear path through a very confusing world. And the Bible says if anyone lacks wisdom, then ask God and our generous God will give it to you. So that's something I want and need in my life, and that's something I'm trying to do on a daily basis. Every day I'm saying, God, give me wisdom. Second thing I'm trying to do instead of complain is this, own my attitude, own your attitude. Listen, when things feel like they're breaking down, your feelings sort of go into overdrive. And what you feel can seem more important than who God is. But listen, and this is a reminder for somebody today, feelings are not facts. Come on, even at home, you need to be putting your hands together for that. Feelings are not facts facts, y'all. And one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself, for your friends, for your family right now is to own your attitude. Stay positive. Stay hopeful. Not with blind optimism, but with a grounded truth that God is in control, that he's present, that he will bring good results even out of the hard things that we face. Third area that, I, that I'm trying to work on in my own life, surround yourself with positive friends. Listen, leaning into a coach or a mentor, for, uh, these, lean, get around people that can bring life to you. I mean, we used to have some positive friends, let's be honest. Some of us had some positive friends before COVID, right? But right now, they're so negative and they complain all the time and they're just toxic. Misery loves company. So if you won't complain with them and you won't whine with them, you'll find out pretty quick that they'll sort of step back and it'll make your stepping back a little bit easier. You got to get around some people right now that bring you life. You got to get around some people that stay positive even in hard situations. You got to get around people that are hopeful in your life. You got to surround yourself with positive life-giving friends right now in this season so that you don't get pulled into the complaining and the and the and, and just the constant sense of of venting that we can fall into in this season. Here's a fourth area that I'm trying to do and that is this. Run to the battle, not away. I, I don't know what battles you may be facing in your own life. We're all facing different battles. Somebody said, hey, we're all in different boats, but we're in the same storm. Whatever battle you're facing, whatever, whatever situation you're up against, Instead of complaining and venting, I just suggest run to the battle, not away. Confront it head on. Do everything within your power to make an impact in that area of your life. Whether you make an impact or not, it's way better than just complaining. Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 7, we learn something about this place where Moses struck the rock and the water flowed out. And it says this, Moses named the place Massa, which means test and Merib Meribah, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying. Now, here it is. I want you to notice. What I'm about to read to you, what we're about to read together is the, is the test question. Like, we are in a test. We are in the wilderness, and this is the question on the test. It's just one question. Is the Lord here with us or not? That's the only question. Is the Lord with us or not? The Israelites not only asked that question, but the implied answer was he's not. And it was easy to think he wasn't. Just look around, there's no water. Just look around, we just doubled back. We, went, we just came back the way we came, y'all. Just, just look around, like, like what, is, what in the world is God doing in our lives in this situation? And, and it's easy to just say, God's not here with us. And right now, it would be easy to look at the headlines and easy to look at the world and easy to look at our own family difficulties or even tragedies and to think God is not here with us. But faith steps in and says, this is a test. And the question on the test, is the Lord here with us or not, gives me an opportunity to answer. Listen, in God's eyes, this is what every test comes down to. Do you believe that he is with you? I mean, it's basically the number one promise in the Bible. Over and over again, God tells people who are frightened and who are overwhelmed, fear not, I will be with you. And so will you apply that promise in this moment of pressure, when you have to make an impossible decision, just declare, my God is with me. When you're forced to make a change that you don't want to make, just declare again in your own heart, my God is with me. When you feel alienated from those you love, just declare, my God is with me. 
When you worry about having enough, declare my God is with me. When you have an unexpected job change, just declare my God is with me. When you have to spend another day with some bored toddlers, <laughs> your kids, just declare my God is with me. When you need to have a difficult conversation, just declare it, my God is with me. When you wonder what's gonna happen to your city or your community, just declare my God is with me. When you don't feel strong enough for the challenge you're facing, declare it, my God is with me. When you're confused and unsure of the direction you need to move, just declare my God is with me. When you're paralyzed by uncertainty, declare it, my God is with me. When you're harassed by anxiety, just declare my God is with me. When you're weighed down with darkness, declare my God is with me. When you're saddened by all that you've lost, declare my God is with me. When you're scared by all that's changed, just declare my God is with me. Listen, when you find yourself at a breaking point, just step back and declare it. My God is with me. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He knows your needs. He knows your fears. He knows what's happened. He knows what's coming. He knows your history. He knows what he's planning for your future. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows how to get you where you need to be. And he knows what you're made of. He knows how to strengthen you. So listen, no matter what is against you, your heavenly father today is for you. How do you turn towards God in moments of crisis? First, expect a test. Just expect it. God doesn't use tests to simply break us, but to remake us. It's a time when God takes away something valuable to give you something priceless. And then don't break faith before the breakthrough. Turn toward God, not away. He can bring what you need most, even from what you want least. God can fill you with new life, no matter what is going on in your life. God can use your breaking point as a turning point. So we're in the wilderness. We're being tested, but the test can be a gift and we can consider it pure joy and we can grow through it. Thank you, Crossroads family. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you. I'd love to just pray for you and with you together before um, we continue on with our experience. Will you bow with me? God, we love you. I thank you for this opportunity just to, to uh, pause and be reminded from your word that we're not alone, that you're with us even in our wanderings, that you'll see us through the wild, through the wilderness in our lives, and that you're with us even in the test. God, may we pass the test. May we grow our endurance through the test. May we become more complete as we follow you in the situations that we're in in our lives. We thank you and we praise you for who you are. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys. Okay, I loved that and I needed it. Anybody else need it? Did you need to hear it? Did you need to take it in? Some of us have gone through some things recently where we'd say, you know what? I almost had a breaking point. Maybe some of you right now are at the breaking point. The test is on you. You feel like you're not passing. You feel like you're not gonna pass. But what did judges tell you to do? Say the words and I'm gonna ask you to say them. My God is with me. My God is with me. Right now, I, I, some of you got to say it. Whisper it. Shout it out. Uh, I text it to somebody. My God is with me. And our God is for you. No one's more for you than God. No one loves you more than God. And if you're at a breaking point, this could be your turning point. And, and so I want you to think about that. God wants to be with you. So you could say those words, my God is with me. But there's a next phrase to say, I'm with God. I'm with God. I know my God is with me and I'm going to be with him. And then now what would have been a breaking point becomes a turning point, which becomes a making point because he makes you better and makes you stronger and, and makes miracles come your way because God is for you. God is for you. And right now, for some of you, this is your turning point. And, and you could turn to God. The Bible's so clear. I love this promise in James chapter 4, verse 8, that says, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And if you just say, God, draw near to me and, and, and be with me so that you could truly say, my God is with me and know it and experience it, God would never run from you. He'll come to you. Right now, do you need that? Right now, do you want that? 
Right now, are you ready to say, my God is with me and I'm with God? And have it be true and have it be real and have it be powerful. So right now, if you need God, let me, let me be as clear as I can. Judd brought it out to you. He's for you. He's for you. You just got to draw near to him. You got to open up to him. You got to commit your life to him. So right now, I'm going to ask you to do that. The Bible says there's a two steps we take to entering into this committed relationship with God. Uh, the first is we pray. We pray and say to him, I want to commit my life to you. I want to be yours. We tell Jesus that I want you to forgive me and cleanse me of all my shame, all my hurt, all my pain, and all my brokenness. I want that to be taken away and, and put into the past. And, and we'll pray. I'm going to lead a prayer, and I want you to pray it with me. Let's do it together. Let's let this be a turning point, not a breaking point. Let it become the making point of, of a great relationship with God and a very, real, very real experience of his power, love, and peace and joy in your life. Let's do it together. And so the first step we take is to pray and tell him, I want to. I want you. I want the life. I want you to be with me, and I want to be with you. The second step's this. You need to make it known. Jesus talked about the fact that once you've made this declaration, the next step, and, and Jesus was always consistent with this, is, is let people know. Uh, in his day, he sent people to tell the priests. He said, I want you to, to tell your family. I, I want everybody to know. We're going to ask you to do it in a really cool way. I'm going to ask you to text the word, amen, to 69922. You can text it. Uh, you can use your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, whatever. You could text on, just text amen to 69922. If you don't have a way to text, then do this. Email me at chuck at crossroadschurch.com. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to leave that prayer in a minute. And I'm going to ask you to text amen. You can actually do it right now. Go ahead and text amen right now. Meaning I'm going to do this. The word amen means the truth. It means for real. It means I'm serious. This is meaningful. So text it right now if you want to. Email me right now and then we'll pray that prayer. And then, by the way, let me tell you what we're going to do. We care about you. So we're going to get right back to you. And, and we want to give you something. We want to give you an electronic copy of The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It's one of the best-selling books of all time. We want to give it to you for free uh, because after you make this commitment to God, we want you to know your purpose and how you discover and live out your purpose. That book's one of the best books to help you discover what the Bible teaches about that. So we want you to have this free copy on us for you because not only is God for you, we're for you. Oh, we're for you. So we're going to pray in a minute. But before we do that, I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you. And I'd love all of you out there who love Jesus. Let's pray right now. Let's actually pray right now that this could be a man's turning point, a woman's turning point, a son or daughter's turning point, a marriage's turning point, a, a Christian who's fallen away and needs to come back, turning point, uh, coming home to, to God and to the church, your turning point to someone who's in a struggle against addiction tonight, this moment could be your turning point. To someone who needs a breakthrough rather than a breaking, you need a breakthrough and let it become your making point. This is your turning point. And so we want you to be able to do it with us. Father, I pray right now for, I pray right now for some men that are watching. The God there actually thought I needed to hear this. I really needed to hear this. I know I did, but I, I know they did too. And I pray they're going to pray this prayer and make this commitment. And they're going to turn and become men of God, men of God who know you and live for you and, and, and experience your power and strength in their life. It's time for them to rise up. I pray for some women who are out there right now and, and one woman in particular who feels so beaten down. And she, she's hurt. She feels betrayed. She feels like she's been cast aside. And in this moment, it's about to break her, but this could become her turning point. That nobody else could have power in her life to do this to her again. That she could now have you as her father. And, and God, you'll be her God. And I pray she's going to pray this prayer right now. I, I, I really believe she's listening, and I believe right now she's crying. But it's her time. I pray for some 
some men and women right now, some guys and girls who their parents have been praying and praying and praying for them. And somehow they're watching and this is their turning point. Uh, And I pray they're going to say yes to you. I think there's some of you, this is your moment. This is your time. Oh, you matter to God. So I want you to pray the prayer with me. I want you to either whisper it or say it out loud. Say these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you love me. And I know you died on the cross for me. And you died for my sins. I pray you'll forgive me and cleanse me from all my sin. I pray you'll heal me from hurt and pain. I pray you'll free me. I pray you'll free me from anything that's holding me back or holding me down. But most of all, say most of all, I pray you'll make me yours. I pray you'll make me alive. And I pray you'll make me brand new. I pray you'll make me brand new. So I say yes. If those are the only words you can say, say it now. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes to you. And I say yes to the life you have for me. So take me now and make me yours. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen means the truth and you did it. And and you know what? Right now, God is for you. God is for you. And so I want you to know that. But go ahead and text us. Amen. Or email me so we can get you your free copy of The Purpose Driven Life so you can know some great next steps to take to get it closer to God and to experience Him. But I want to say this. In Romans, it says, if God is for you, then nothing can be against you. So may tonight, may this message, may this moment be your turning point to a making point, away from a breaking point, so you can know God. And may you know his love in a powerful, incredible way. And uh, I cannot wait till we get together again. Sunday, we start our study in Isaiah. Next week, we come back to our best of the best series with my really good friend, Gene Apple. And we really want to have these become moments that help you grow closer and discover God's love and plan for your life. So that's what we want for you. And so even though it's true, God's for you, so are we. We join with God in being for you, wanting the best for you. And right now, I want to throw it back to Destiny, who has some great closing thoughts. Well, congratulations to all of you who made a decision to follow Jesus today. And if you did text us to make a decision, be sure to reply with your name so we can go ahead and send you a gift. I also want to invite you to gather your family and friends to be a part of our family by joining us right here online again next week. Now we are live on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. or Sundays at 9 a.m. So if you're watching right now on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you will never miss out on any of our new messages. Also, if you found this message super encouraging, go ahead and click the like button and let us know what resonated most with you in the comments down below. Now, if you found yourself thinking, you know what, I really wish so-and-so would have been here right now to listen to this message, go ahead and hit the share button and send it to them so they can also be encouraged. Finally, if your life is being impacted by Crossroads and if you want to be a part of making an impact all over the world, you can text giving to 69922 to make a financial gift today. Well, thank you again so much for watching and we will see you right here next week.